All right, we're back Monday. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick this back up by the panel, move it forward. We're gonna end up pulling that one out over there because we're gonna be doing all the work at the shop. So what we're gonna do, this one uh, does not, I don't think it has the power to pull itself out and we're pretty close to the back. So like I was saying, pull this forward, pull this out, then we'll push this one up against and then we're gonna do the pintle toe technique that we did to this one, to that one there. That one's getting all of the suspension pulled off, five inch lift. Uh, we're gonna fix uh, the ABS, we're gonna fix the instrument cluster, and we're also gonna do the rear brakes, oil change, I think a fuel filter, and once all that's paid for, then we're gonna be doing injectors on it, because obviously it needs them. So I think he's gonna be interested in selling this one as well, or I don't know if he's selling or parting it out, but she is pretty rusty in some spots. I think the frame's pretty scaly. Um, I think I showed you guys that in previous videos, but if anyone wants to make an offer on it, the body's pretty bad. I don't see any holes in the frame, but like I said, it is a northern truck. It's got new tires, new brakes. It'll have new injectors. Um, not a stock 48RE. This one has had some work done to it. But with that being said, let's get this thing moved. Uh, I'm probably going to have to drop the drive shaft because even in neutral, it's going to spin the engine over. So I might have to do that real quick as well. But I'm going to get this lifted up and then we're going to jack this up, put it on the pintel and then pull her forward. All right, we got her pulled forward. I didn't take the wheels off. They are locked though. That transmission is locked solid. So we're going to have to take the light bar. and put that on the black truck. Shouldn't be all that hard. Ugh. Now one more here. So there's enough life left in it. We'll just plop it on the front. All right, so I got the other one way out there. Unfortunately, this won't start, so I'm gonna have to put a toe strap on it and pull it out. I wanted to put this over there because then I could just back right up to it, drop it down, take the wheels off, tie the axles up. That's not gonna happen. So, since it won't start, I don't even hear a fuel pump. Uh, the other thing is the tank is kind of held up with a ratchet strap. So, my kind of truck, but we'll get it. All right, so I don't have anyone else. So we're gonna try to go to that big open field right there. I got Liam in it steering it. I let him know that there is no brakes. You'll be fine. It's a nice secluded lot. This is what you have kids for, guys. Tell you what, if you don't use your kids for stuff like that, you're not teaching them. You're not teaching them what they need to learn in life. All right, how was it? See, he got it. You know, no brakes, he's fine. It's not like it was gonna go anywhere. So, that's sitting here. I gotta re-hook back up to the green one. This time I'm gonna have to take the back wheels off because I'm not trying to force it like that up against my trans and this trans and this is a good core so I don't have the clutch hydraulics either otherwise I'd let Liam do it uh, but the clutch hydraulics are in Josh's truck now so these are gonna go on his truck and I shouldn't have done that bam 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 so if you guys are wondering Josh is probably gonna get these wheels and tires and he's gonna actually uh, hmm Kind of like these a lot more honestly but yeah so he's gonna get these wheels and tires with the spacers and, and whoever buys this truck's gonna get his tires most likely so i'm gonna get rehooked back up this is in park now it's all good guys teach your kids young all right wheels are off i'd like to get a riser hitch for this one so that we could maybe make this higher but we're gonna do the same thing with this but the axles are gonna get tied up so it'll make it really easy but in the parking lot, this will be fine. All right, she parked. Believe it or not, you do get a shitload of clearance. I wonder if the e-brake was on that whole time. Oh, it wasn't. I'm gonna jack this up, throw the wheels back on, two lug nuts, call it a day. I'm gonna lock the e-brake. I don't know if it works, but there you go. We did start getting the wheels to roll a little bit, but again, can't be pushing it too much. 
All right, so the wheels are not coming off. You guys can see pretty rusted solid. So I'm just gonna go get the trailer. It's gonna be a pain to go do, but I'm gonna go grab the trailer. We're gonna try to break these wheels free. That's gonna be a pain in the ass. So I have all the lug nuts off on this side. We're gonna try to break them free. We'll see what happens. All right, here she is. Got the axle strapped up, wheels tied, light bar in the back. There you go. Now we have turn signals. We're gonna go stop up at sheets. Safety chains are on. Everything is good. We're good to go. All right, one, two, three, four, and it's still back there. So we are about, let's say about seven minutes from the shop at this point. It's moving though. There's only like, a, it, it's a good little 15 minute ride. Nothing super crazy, not like what we did the other day, that two and a half hour trip, but you know, as long as you take the necessary precautions, it's not, this isn't really all that bad. Now on a rusty truck, I could see it, maybe the hitch snaps or some shit, but you gotta realize how heavy some of these trailers are and tongue weight and whatnot. This is a single cab, so I mean, the weight's a little bit less, four wheel drive, all the weight's up in the front. So, and then I threw the back wheels in the back of my truck, as you can see. So, we're gonna get up there and start swapping some parts, and hopefully this thing runs by the time we're done with it. Alright, there you go. I'm gonna get it up the hill, back it down. It does not run, unfortunately. So, it looks like what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this into the shop and then just put it on jack stands, because I gotta do rear brakes on it anyway, and a rear ABS. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. We're not gonna unhook or anything yet. We're just gonna wait until that's out of the way and pop this bad Larry in there. How do you guys feel about this towing method out of curiosity? How many of you guys uh, in the comments be uh, bitching? Cause like it works, it works very well. I mean, aside from this guy here, I would like to upgrade that at some point, but you can see this bumper's literally on. All right, so I got about a half hour till I gotta leave, but we got her up in the air, got the ratchet straps off the suspension, got our box open for all the stuff we're gonna be doing, and she's just kinda chilling. Um, unfortunately, this hitch was so rusty, I had to pound this in, and it didn't go back far enough, so now we gotta pound it back out. So I'm gonna get the wheels out. We gotta take this trans, I got some emails on that. Just waiting on some phone calls. I've sent my numbers out, just waiting on that. And yeah, so we'll move them out of the way and then I will see you guys back tomorrow where we will start doing all the stuff. Like the wheat, the, you know, we gotta do the brakes, rotors. All right, it do be the next day. We got everything all prepared. I got everything out of the toolbox that was requested. So we're gonna be doing the back brakes, rotors and calipers. We got everything over here. I'm gonna have to clean off this rotor because it's got a little bit of scaly on it. Uh, we got two new calipers, all new brake pads, fuel filter, oil. We need another gallon of oil, that's not enough. Uh, these take three gallons, not two. And then once all this stuff's done, we're gonna tackle the rear first so that way I can get the wheels on and just get them out of the way. And then we're gonna end up dropping, I think we need to add yeah, there's plenty on those threads. They're a little rusty, so I'm kind of concerned about that, but we need to add about that much of a spacer, but we will see if it's necessary or not. Uh, the stacks are not hooked up either, so we're not dealing with anything with that that does have an out the back. They're just kind of sitting in there for those wondering, but it should be a relatively simple day, and then we're gonna have to drop the front suspension. I also, the other thing, if you guys didn't notice when this thing was running, it doesn't run now, but it was running, uh, the tachometer does not work. So I'm gonna get that fixed for him as well. And then we gotta figure out the rear ABS. So there is a sensor back there that is causing an issue. And then we have the full lift kit right here, so. But we're gonna end up taking all of the front suspension off first, and then just getting this thing hung up and whatnot, probably drop the axle completely. And then I have to pull that one in. I'll probably do that tomorrow. I'm going to pull that in in front, drop my suspension, because like I was saying, he's getting that 
and then I'm going to try to clean these springs up, maybe paint them a little bit so they don't look completely like garbage, but these are pretty rusty springs, but at least it'll bring me back down to stock, and then down the road, if I ever decide to just go get new springs, I will. So that's kind of what we're tackling. I'm going to get the rear brakes done first, and boy, oh boy, I'm going to show you guys, dualies are a pain in the ass on the rear brakes. So what you have to do is you have to drain the axle. You have to pull this out, okay? The axle has to come out. Then you have to take the caliper off. Then you have to pull the entire rotor assembly. This thing comes off all as one assembly. Now, where it even gets worse, you guys see this little spacer thing here? What you have to do is, you see these? I'll turn the light on for you. There's a bolt that comes in from the back. So you basically bolt this rotor to this from the inside to replace them. So that's what we're going to be dealing with. And then I need to figure out where, if there is a brake leak, because it doesn't have any brakes. I don't know if that was just from it not being bled or if, I, I don't know. So we're going to throw everything together and then try to see if we can't find anything. Um, we were instructed to do the brakes, rotors, calipers, ABS. And if there is anything else, I will uh, note the owner. But in the meantime, hopefully it's just something simple because this thing is a project. And to get it running, um, it definitely needs the injectors like I was saying. So this is around a $4,500 bill, all said and done. I mean, keep in mind, injectors are about $2,500 plus the cross tubes and whatnot. And we're also doing a full day of suspension, brakes. I cut a brake on the brakes and the instrument cluster, so that um, I definitely undercharged for that. So kind of trying to keep, you know, everything is as good as I can. I also don't charge for the time that filming and whatnot. It's all flat rate stuff. It's not like if I take too long, I'm going to charge more. If I don't take long enough, I'm going to charge less. It's all flat rate. That's kind of what the hours go off of. But once we get all this stuff done, then we're going to focus on getting the truck physically running. It is going to need a set of injectors, and it is possibly going to need a fuel pump. I don't hear the pump turning on, but we will see. It could just be low on fuel. Hopefully, that's all it is. So what we're going to do, once we get the new fuel filter in, I'm going to turn, it, you know, turn the key on and see if it starts filling up the bowl. If it doesn't, we know that we have a fuel filter. We have a fuel pump that needs replaced as well. But you guys saw how the thing runs definitely has a miss in a few cylinders and she is not happy to run so definitely has no power misfires all that fun stuff so i'm gonna get this off and i'll show you guys all right everything is pulled off oh boy there's not a single e-brake cable in this damn thing wow so there's all that stuff there here's the bolts that hold the rotor on we're trying to get it off now so then i'm gonna clean it up throw the new rotor on slap everything in we've already cleaned the surface here um i recommend a new rear seal it looks like this one's been replaced but like i don't know how long ago but i'm gonna make sure it's all clean that way it doesn't leak um i haven't i've only ever had like one leak from reusing them but again i'm just doing what I'll when in doubt just get a bigger hammer so this can go in the scrap bin. Everything's going in the scrap bin besides this. I'm gonna get this seal surface cleaned up, clean all that up, bolt the new rotor to it, throw it in. Imagine being one of those people that doesn't use caliper grease. You know, imagine being one of those. No professional puts brakes on without putting caliper grease on. I love how this is like such a controversial thing on the channel too. And you can tell who's not a mechanic because they'll tell you, don't use that stuff, it's not good. It, it introduces grime and dirt. No, no, it doesn't. If you want your brakes to last a long time, gotta use caliper grease. One side done. I'm gonna skip the other side. Not, I'm not gonna show you guys the other side, but we're gonna get this one done. Uh, I sprayed it with brake clean. Any of the other rust and whatnot will run through. All that stuff's gonna come right off. So, let's get the other side done. Brakes are done both sides. We're gonna get it bled a little later. And then also go through and let them kind of spin a little bit and hit them. 
just to get a little bit of the extra rust off. I did go and spray it with the brake clean, you know, cleaned it off and whatnot, but some of that rust is still a little stuck. Not a big deal. Rotors rust when you don't, you know, run them. So there's nothing you can do about that other than actually running them. All right, so figured I'll do something clean for now, which I thought I was gonna, it was gonna be clean, but. So we pulled the instrument cluster. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys. There's two bolts that go up into the bottom here. Don't ever put them back in if you ever pull this apart. Like throw everything back together. Just don't put the bolts in the bottom of this because then to pull your bezel, you have to pull all of the bottom off. So I'm gonna put everything nicely in, not put those two bolts in. That way, one, if anybody ever tries to steal your radio or some shit, they're not gonna break this pulling it off. Or you know, it just, it makes it a lot easier. It saves you a shitload of time all for those two bolts. They don't need to be there. And then everything else, obviously put all the other bolts back in. But here's the instrument cluster over here. I'm gonna show you guys, do not do this for yourself if you're not familiar with solder. But basically, if you have a instrument cluster that has a tachometer that doesn't work or only works slightly, this one only revs to 200 RPMs at idle when it's 750, 800. So what we're gonna do is, there's three things on the back here that you need to resolder. I'm not gonna show you what they are because I don't want people to attempt to do this themselves. Because if you don't do this properly, you will ruin this entire thing. And these are about 400 to 500 bucks on eBay used. And they, they're not cheap. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and fix this one. We got our Milwaukee soldering iron right here. And I'm going to go through and do that. And we will have a working tachometer, which I can't show you. Go back in the last couple videos and you'll see when this thing did run, the tack was very, very low reading and did not really work at all. Once we get it running, I'll show you guys how the tack works. We also did this on that white mega cab that was in here a while back. And I've done this on quite a few trucks and it and just like that, instrument cluster is done. All right, now she's nice and clean too. We're probably gonna throw that as a uh, service. If anybody wants these things repaired, all I can do is the tachometer fix. So if you have a tachometer that doesn't work, which is the biggest complaint about these things, and you need it repaired, we're probably gonna do that as a service. We'll probably charge 125. You cover shipping on the way here, and we'll cover shipping on the way back. Um, send me an email if you guys want that. I'll show you guys the aftermath of this obviously once the truck runs just to prove that you know no BS here, but takes about uh, I don't know about 45 minutes something like that So it's not crazy bad, but it's definitely You get to put all your screws back in. It's definitely nicer than not having it. I hated not having my tack So I probably fixed Let's say at least 15 20 of these so far so I know we fixed the tachometers. I can't guarantee this. You hear the chime? None of those lights worked before. And yeah, like none of the background lights would come on and the chime would not work either. So keep that in mind. You might actually end up getting that fixed as well uh, by accident. So if your chime doesn't work, if your back lights don't come on or your tachometer doesn't work, those are the three things that have been fixed on this one. So like I said, I pulled this off. When you unplug this, those lights will come on and it'll start dinging at you. Well, when I unplugged it, it stayed like that and nothing, no dinging, none of that. So this lets you know that, hey, your lights are on. So that feature didn't work either. All right, everything's back together. No, I don't care what you comments say. I am not cleaning that. I got the instrument cluster cleaned. The only bolts you're not going to put in, like I said, are these two bolts. The two here are in. Every bolt, every one of them down along the bottom, they're all in. But there's no reason that you should have to take all of the center console off to pull this off. Now, this just pulls right out. So, with that being said, on to the next thing. You know, for shits and giggles, I will. I'm going to crank it. It's not going to start, but watch the tack. See how the tack actually moves when it's cranking? That's what it's supposed to do. But, when it would fire up, it would stay at 200. So... There you go. Send me your tax. I'll fix them. 175 bucks. You ship them, but make sure you send me an email though if you're gonna send them because like I will never know where this comes from and this and that. So just send me a note where you want it sent back to, um, and then get a hold of me for payment and whatnot. We'll take care of it. So this wasn't on the agenda. I saw these in the back. Um, I'm gonna ask him if he wants me to do that, but we need to verify the fuel pump works before I do that. So the 
tank is held up with a ratchet strap. I need to assess the situation before I say anything because who knows, maybe the bolts are bad, which it looks like they are. Check out that cross member. Yeah, she's, uh, she's pretty rotty. I think this truck's gonna end up being parted out, but he wants everything to work and be good before he does that. So there's one of the snap bolts up there and looks like the other one is snapped as well. So yeah, she's, uh, <laughs> she's pretty bad. I'd be afraid to see what this frame looks like back behind there, but in the meantime, I wonder if this is something that could be saved if like, if you like did a frame off restoration. All right, here's where we are at. I'm gonna tell you guys, give you guys a big tip right here. See these lug nuts for a dually? It says on them how much they're supposed to be torqued to, 140 foot pounds. Some of these were torqued to 200 foot pounds, some of them were torqued to 40 foot pounds. That gun should not be struggling to get lug nuts off, I will say that, because that'll pull lug nuts off of a Ram 5500 and even our freight liners when we had it. So some of them were really, really tight and the other ones were just loose, so just be careful of that. Um, you do not want to ruin these lug studs on these dually adapters, they are not cheap. I'd rather replace a wheel bearing than replace those because they are expensive little bastards. Alright, so upon further inspection, I figured this was going to be a problem down in there. I, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but see how it spins. And then I started getting a little closer. You guys see that right there? The spring's actually broken. Let's, uh, let's check the other side just out of curiosity. Because if that that means that we're not going to be able to use these springs. That one's not broken, but the other side is, which means that this side is not much farther behind. All right, so I guess that means we're going to have to put this on hold. I'm going to get cleaned up. We need another gallon of oil. We need injectors, and we need a probably a lift pump. And then I notice... There's a lift pump in there. I turn the key on, and that does not fill up with fuel, the little bowl down in there. And there is no fuel pump fuse. We'll see, I will get back to you guys tomorrow. I'm probably gonna kill the video here. Um, if anybody has a stock set of springs, let me know. Send me a comment, message, anything. Links are in the description if you need to get a hold of me. But we're gonna call this here, I'm gonna get cleaned up, and then we're gonna end it for the day. So. Appreciate you guys for sticking around. I'll see you in the next video later.